Do I sound like crap here? I have no idea. You always sound like crap. I don't always sound like crap. I sound melodious. Two guys, one podcast, wild, abandoned sexuality of a stallion. I lose more and more respect for you every time we do this show. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. It's theater of the mind, baby. Anything I show you on the internet is fact now. You just like to see dreams crushed. You are the crusher of dreams. No, don't get me wrong. I'm a cool guy. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. And this is the podcast. Welcome to it. Two Guys. Start over. That's all right. Welcome to I two- did it again. You motherfucker. Welcome. Okay, but for real this time. No, seriously, do it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Two Guys, One Start Pod- over, you laugh. Yeah, I did. Okay, here we go. Fresh start. Take it from the top. Welcome to Two Guys, One Podcast. I'm one guy. And I'm the other. And this- <laughs> <laughs> what is that? That's... I know. This is the podcast, by the way. Here we go. It's a loosey-goosey kind of night. I'm just telling you right now, you're tuning in. It's going to be that kind of show. Here's a little behind-the-scenes info. We sit in a room and record in this in a magical golden throne room. We record this thing, put it in the can, and then I edit it down so that you only get the good bits. We leave all the crap on the floor. So this is still going to be a good episode for you. I'm just telling you, it's probably not going to have a through line because it's one of those kinds of days, right? It's like a scrambled egg show. That's exactly what it is. This is a pizza egg. What the? F- except it's a late pizza nights. egg. Yeah, like you, like the night before you ordered pizza and you got like one slice left and you cut that bitch up with scissors and you throw it into the scrambled eggs. What? No. <laughs> That's disgusting. From somebody who doesn't eat a whole lot of stuff. I don't eat anything. I don't eat you, eggs so, uh, or pizza. So who the, who did you see do this? I don't know. I thought it maybe on a TV show. Or no, something. I don't think you've. I honestly don't think you've seen anybody do it, and it's just something that you made up. Nah, somebody talked about pizza eggs one time. No, so. there's no such thing as pizza eggs. Well, think about it for a second and tell okay. me that it doesn't sound a little delicious. Maybe it would be like an omelet, right? A pizza omelet? Yeah, kind of. Like okay, so like you got well, not pepperoni maybe, but like a hamburger pizza perhaps, or maybe just like a nice veggie pizza. You cut that bitch up real, you know, real small, and throw it in there with your scrambled eggs. I don't, I don't understand what like. So you're getting tomato. You're getting a little. You're getting a little bread in there. You're getting a little sauce. You're getting a little, like the vegetables, the meat. I whatever. got it. I got the concept. I'm not. People throw a bunch of shit in their eggs, right? It's usually like another ingredient. Like a pizza is a bunch of ingredients already. Like you already have a pizza. Why fuck it up? <laughs> like you, you win. You have the pizza. Eat the pizza. You won. Fair enough. So you have no notes tonight? No, I got notes. I got notes on my phone. Uh, hmm. I, although I gotta tell you, I don't have I don't have viewer mail. What? I don't have mistakes. There were a couple of responses to like worst movie. I asked about that. Yeah, it was and one of the worst ones. See, I don't even remember. It's, none of them were that fascinating. And the other thing was, I knew we were going to be kind of pressed for time and recording this week, just because I'm so busy. I've got the kids a lot this week. Works busy for me. Works busy for you. And I mean, I knew we were going to have one night effectively. So we're just we going to wing it. We won't, well, not just wing it, but we were going to have a few topics. We were just going to talk about that. Whatever time we got out of that, that's what we got out of. All right. You know, you've got several things that you want to talk about. You you went on a little trip and came back with content. You were like texting me notes on the way back. Oh yeah, but I don't remember any of them. And we're going to talk about this. And we're going to. Well, I got my phone, okay, so we good. could we could go back through the notes. I got something I want to talk about though. All right. Fandom. I've been thinking about a lot about. Being a fan, I, I've got two kids. Do I want to encourage them to get into sports? The NBA Finals are on right now, and, and I'm a big LeBron James fan. I, I've been thinking about the highs and lows of that. Bill Simmons wrote this great article talking about his daughter's first heartbreak as a sports fan. She was a Kings fan, and they didn't win the other night in L.A. She was all hyped up thinking this is the night that they closed the Stanley Cup. They lose, and she goes home crying. He, meanwhile, is not a Kings fan. Did he make fun of her? He didn't make fun of her. He was he was, was like, really ha, patient. Ha, you couldn't close it out, bitch. No, he was he was really patient with her, but she took it out on him. She was like, "You don't understand. You're oh, not a real king. No. You don't really like the Kings. You know, whatever." Which is awesome. It's one of those moments. If you are into sports at all, if you are a fan, you look forward. I look forward to having those kinds of moments with my kids. My kid will never be able to tell me that ever. Why? Because I'm a Cubs fan. 
So that kid will never be able to. He will that this, or she. He or she will never be able to throw sports heartbreak in my face. I, I'm a Saints fan. I mean, we finally got over the hump. Maybe between now and and the time that your kid's right, old a, enough I'm to a, get into I'm sports. I'm a Saints fan too, but in my lifetime, like we. We, we won, won one. We won one. Well, maybe the Cubs will win one in the next year or two, too. You don't watch baseball. <laughs> no, that's a true story. You I don't know. tell me how we're not going to win, all right? I know we're not going to win. And there's always next year. So is Cubs – that that was going to be my question to you. What was the thing or person or team or, or whatever when you were a kid – and it doesn't have to be sports-related. Maybe it's a superhero or a, or a action figure. My or, dad. You know, your dad was he a hero for you? No, Were you we, a super. We, no, we didn't get along. I mean, I love I love the man now. Like right. we have a great relationship now. But I don't know. I guess maybe all boys have at some point. Well, you got to kill the father kind of thing for a while. I I think definitely like you. Uh, no, I think he uh, because he grew up. I mean, he grew up. I mean, he had a hard life. So <clears throat> I don't think I think he only knew one way of parenting. I was actually thinking about this earlier, actually, because you know Father's Day is coming up. Yeah. Hey, this is gonna. This will play on Father's Day. Oh, look, look at perfect, that. This perfect. is very. Good look at us we, being topical. We, yeah, we wrote this down. Of course. So, like sometimes you sometimes you got to be the coach, but sometimes man, you got to be the cheerleader. And he didn't get that, so it didn't matter. I think most people are gonna believe this now, but I was a track star, man. Like I was very athletic. My race was the eight hundred. I didn't lose a single eight hundred event, and. Uh, there's one event where my pants were able to come and my grandparents were able to come to watch me. And I blew these cats out of the water. Like, they weren't even close. Like, not just one. You no, dominated. Like, I was I was finishing when they were coming out of, like, the fucking fourth turn. Right? And I, and I run up to the to the stadium and I'm, you know, I'm sweaty. I'm tired. But, like, I beat everybody and my whole family was there to see me win. And I'm like, did you guys see me? And my dad literally said, yeah, I saw you beat yourself. Because when I looked back, everyone was so far behind me. The last, I don't know, 15 yards. You slowed up? Yeah, I just kind of trotted in. Wow. And to him, my time could have been better, but I wouldn't know because I quit on myself. Wow. That's a hard lesson to learn from your dad, man. And I mean, obviously, we hope that our generation and, and, and us in particular, that we can pass that same lesson on in maybe a softer way. That was a pretty harsh way. Like that was he gave you a good lesson with a heavy hand. Oh no, if if my kids enter any single event and they don't win, there's gonna be two hours when they get home where they have to kneel on rice. <laughs> You're ridiculous. That's just, that's You're just ridiculous. how it is. My dad, the disconnect wasn't he was a good cheerleader when he was interested. The, what he had a real problem was the things that he liked to do. You didn't like to do. Were not the things that I liked to do. And the things that I liked to do were not things that he liked to do. He did finally come around. He was actually in. He came and did a show at the local community theater with me like my junior year of high school, I guess. I'd been doing this since like seventh or eighth grade. And so we're five, six years on now, pretty much. I'd been doing this, and finally he came and he he subbed in this one little role, no speaking, line, you know, no lines or anything. He just made this up so he could be in the show with you. Uh, no, no, no. He, we didn't make up the role. Um, he we needed a big guy. We we like we had plenty of kids. We didn't have that many adults, and we needed someone that looked imposing on the stage, mostly. Oh, we was needed, this Oliver Twist? No, it was Lil Abner is what it was. We needed a we needed we needed to turn this scrawny kid into a muscle man and the easiest way to do that since we didn't have any muscle men was just to get a man that was much larger. <laughs> so so like we went from we went from like a 14-year-old kid and and he took the serum, you know, the Kickapoo Joy Juice or whatever it was and then and then the set revolved or whatever happened in my and there's my dad standing there on there, you know, like 45-year-old man at this point. He was very. He was a great sport about it, and he had a lot of fun actually. Once he was into it, and he always told me like, "I wish that I got more involved with the theater thing." It just wasn't his deal. And in his defense, he's been to see, I think, all but one show that I've ever been in. He's he's seen them at least once, and so that's something. Um, but yeah, we didn't really have that. We didn't even share sports really. He was a baseball fan. 
I didn't care for it. I was into boxing, but then boxing fell apart before I was old enough to really get into that sport, you know? So you weren't really into boxing? No. I went. I like to go with him to see boxing matches when I was like four and five and six. I remember that. But we're talking about so when Mike kind of, Tyson you was kind of, first Yeah, like you've kind of you've romanticized boxing The boxing a world. Yes, yes. Like, yeah, I could. I don't care. Uh, I, basketball was the one thing, but basketball wasn't really his sport. And we were always – we always liked – different teams for instance and, and this is this is where the real crux of my question was michael jordan is what i was sold out on as a kid yeah i mean because we, we were brainwashed with it yeah sure but i mean i know lots of guys my age that don't still worship the ground that jordan walks no, on. i was always a bill russell fan really even then see i i've never been able to even now that i've i've gotten a, a much deeper grasp of the sport historically i've seen a lot of games from the time before my time now with espn classic and things like that i i still i cannot get my mind around any argument really for any other player except for jordan i just love him let me this is how much i love jordan when, when i was well, a kid when jordan comes back and wins 10 rings then i'll say hello i know <laughs> well you can agree though the the league was very different then you could keep a team together then the the salary cap and and all of the different rules now that exist to keep one team from amassing a dynasty like that. The Boston Celtics run will never happen again. Bill Russell didn't do that all on his own. Come on now. There was a tremendous amount of talent on all of those teams. I couldn't, I didn't really hear you. I had five rings in each year. Ah. So it kind of blocked out. I apologize. I see. Anyway, this is how much I love Michael Jordan. I wore Jordan cologne. Yes, that's right. I wanted to smell like a professional basketball player, apparently. And and I wore it for a long time. It's like stank palming yourself. Like three or four years I wore Michael Jordan. Like I bought it I would I would I bought it once myself and then would always get it like for birthday and Christmas for like three years in a row. Dude, you're fucking weird. I know, man. I know. So anyway, like I had posters. I bought the videotapes when they came out with his highlight reels. I got, like, if there was a magazine and Jordan was on the cover, I probably needed a copy of that magazine. And did you, had you ever played basketball? When I was very, very young, yes. I went to. When when was the last time you played basketball? In in, in an organized fashion? Like in a serious game. I don't care if it was pickup, I mean, half court, whatever, but that you seriously played competitively. I'm not talking about horse. I'm talking about playing a game. Yeah, high school. And the last time in any organized fashion, in any kind of a league, was, was like 8, 9, 10 years old, something like that. So you like really that. hadn't put any... Oh, I played outside in my... I had a, I've had always had a hoop at the house. Always growing up, I had a hoop outside. And I played basketball every day. Every day outside, I played basketball. By I, myself or with, or with my dad or, or with you know my sister or whatever. I stopped playing basketball in high school... Because I was playing basketball, a little pickup game outside. A guy came down on top of me. We're going for a rebound. And I broke my ankle right before a district track meet. Oh, God. That, that's why you don't like basketball. I've, I've never played since. Basketball ruined your – like basketball is your Mr. Destiny moment. I, that pickup you know game. What? I don't think I've ever even – I don't think since then – I had touched a basketball. I'm saying if you end up in a in a deep dark place in your life and and your car dies and you stumble into a little pub and Michael Kane is tending bar and asks I about the moment Michael, that you would take Michael back Michael Kane to tend my bar. I'm saying <laughs> that like one of the moments you might go back to is that time I played pickup basketball and lost my track career. <laughs> oh no, my friend, that is such a small trivial thing that have that has happened. Oh, okay. To me, there's more. There's, I wanted to like anti-romanticize it as like this pivotal moment. That, no, no. There's other regrets in my life that have affected other people that I would rather change than me losing scholarships. Look at you being altruistic and whatnot. Like, I appreciate that. Even though I'm the bastard. We've established you are actually a good person. You believe you are evil, which makes the whole thing really messy. I believe I'm a good person. In theory, I'm a good person. In practicality, I am a robot that could crush people. I, no, we but, all know what androids do. We've seen Ridley Scott movies. But you, th- we've talked about this before. You think all people are inherently good? I believe that. I don't act that way. <laughs> I, I don't think people are inherently good, man. But you do act that way. Yeah, because you, you know, like the the Dalai Lama says. 
you need to be the change that you want to see in the world. I don't think that was the Dalai Lama, was it? I, I, you know what? It could be a uh, we made a huge mistake, but I think I'm right. I think the Dalai Lama said, "Be the change you want to see," or John Lennon. I'm gonna say it was Gandhi. Gandhi? I think it was Gandhi. It could be. I think one of us is definitely right. right. I think it's either Gandhi or the Dalai Lama. I'm gonna say Gandhi. I'll go with the Dalai Lama. All right. Then. I think that dude's way more. Put it on the board. Well, right. I don't. That's. I don't. We don't have a board. We do, we have, do a board. have a board. We do have a board. Look at that. We're totally stealing that from from this fantasy focus football podcast or whatever. But but they they do an like all season long they do an ongoing tally of their bets, and then at the end of the season like they tally them up or whatever. Like we could have just an ongoing who's ahead. Uh, I feel like this. I feel like. I would probably lose the majority of those bets. Like, if we made 10 bets, you would win seven and I would win three. But I think I would end up with more money. Because when I'm wrong, I'm really convinced that I'm yes, right. Yes. And I could squeeze, I could squeeze more, more dimes out of you. That's possible. So, Michael Jordan, I, I beloved him. Who did you love? You were, were you a Cubs fan, fan from a, from childhood? Uh, yeah. I mean, growing up, I mean, it was Cubs and, Cubs if you were a baseball fan, and uh, the Saints if you were a football fan. Were you one of these guys? Did you wear the shirts? Did you have the hat? Did you posters on the wall uh, and the whole I, nine? I probably have 15 or 16 Cubs hats probably right now. That's awesome. I have a couple of jerseys. I don't think I've, I don't think I've loved a player more than I love Ryan Dempster right now. That's a pretty good one. So why – I mean, you're a Cubs fan. Mm-hmm. We're both Saints fans. Right. It sucks when they're bad. Right. But we talked about this in a couple of episodes ago, uh, to where you research things so much that you know you're going to enjoy it before you do it. Yes. And I, I don't. I, what, I'm in it for the experience. So if your teams hadn't been as bad as they, they were, would you have enjoyed that win so much? I'll say this, I can't imagine anything in my life short of the birth of my two children. I have not had anything that has given me as much joy as that St. Super Bowl. I was so, I was deliriously happy. I cried tears of joy on the phone trying to talk to people and just share that moment with, with, and it was silly. It's silly when you think about it. It's a game that these people get paid far too much money for that you and I can't afford to go see a game on a regular basis if if once in a blue moon even and yet man yeah I don't I can't think of other than the birth of my two children I can't think of anything that I've been happier about than that Super Bowl win after just years of futility here's the deal I'm a huge Saints fan have been since as far as I can remember they won the Super Bowl yeah. Why didn't that affect you like it did? I mean, you cheer for them on weekends, and I've I've watched games with you. You yeah. get into it and nervous at moments. Yeah, and I know that I know the I know the Saints' history, right? Like I've been there. Like I've I grew up watching the game with my dad, which I'm sure it meant a tremendous amount to him. But it's uh, it's it's the journey for me, man. It's not so much. You had already had that cathartic moment in small pieces over the weeks leading up to the Super Bowl win then. Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, like, I really don't want I, – okay, I don't hate LeBron James. Right. All right, I don't. I'm not a big enough basketball fan to really hate any player, except for Vladi Divac. <laughs> hate the man. Uh, I don't want LeBron to win because I love the storylines surrounding him, like – Cracking in the four, uh, you know, cracking in the fourth quarter, choking, not making the shot. Uh, I love that whole storyline. I love being considered one of the greatest in your area of expertise, and I love the struggle that even the greatest can have to get over the top. Right. That's what I. That's what I enjoy watching. That's what I love to see. And then whenever he gets there, it's just not. It's not interesting to me anymore. It's not. I don't care. Once LeBron, I will watch whatever team he is on. Until he wins his ring. And then I won't watch anymore. I won't care. There are moments when when he's playing. That you touch yourself. 
Well, no, but Liar. it's pretty close, man. Like, I mean, it's it's not. No, I'm not sexually attracted to him or anything. I just love the pure joy of watching someone that seems to be born to do a thing. Watching someone that is the ultimate. That's why I watch the moon landing pretty much every week. <laughs> the moon landing? Yes. Why? Because Neil Armstrong was born to he walk on born the moon? He was born to walk on the moon. Born, my friend. Do you see how he just, how he just hops around all nimbly pimbly like he belonged there? You and I have talked about this before. It's one of the deals about reality TV. If you watch someone that is at a very high level in their craft, any craft, it's interesting to watch someone that is super proficient at something, right? That's a that's a captivating thing, or can be at least. He seems to be built to play basketball. I, it just makes me ecstatic. You combine that with the fact that he comes off as such a nice guy, and it seems like he's the kid, and he always struck me as this. He seems like he's the kid down the street. I grew up. I feel like I know five or six I'm not, LeBron. I'm not interested. I'm not interested at all in the guy who's built for that for a sport. I want to see the guy who's not built for the sport succeed. Bugsy. I want to see, I want to see Bugsy Mo, Spud Webb, win a slam dunk contest, my friend. And I want to see Tom Dempsey kick a 68-yard field goal, my friend. Without toes. Without toes. That's what I want to see. I want to see the Jamaican bobsled team. There's a movie that makes me cry every time. Cool Runnings. Every time I cry. You cry at every, Cool Runnings? Every time, man. Oh, man. It is heart-wrenching. How often in your lifetime do you try so hard at something and then just fail? I don't. Playing Settlers of Catan with you. That's about, like, that's, in recent memory, that's the one thing that I've done the longest and the most consistently without any success to give me the positive feedback is playing that board game with you. And Settlers, we don't, we don't, Settlers we don't of play Catan. Anymore. No, I had to give it up because I'm not wired to do a thing without any positive reinforcement. I cannot do a thing and get spanked on my the dad. nose every time. No. No, your dad didn't train me. I I had my dad, and he might have wanted to be that, but he was flanked by my mother and my grandmother, and they were all about positive reinforcement. My mother made sure of one thing. I will never, ever feel too sorry for myself. Here's, I'm cool, and I know it. Here's the thing. My, my parents were the first terrorists in my life, <laughs> and I love them, but they were. I got disciplined a lot. But the, the things that had a lasting effect on me were their mind games. Like, I'm eight years old, right? I'm outside uh, playing because I'm, I'm eight years old. It's after dark. It doesn't, I'm eight. I don't know any different, right? So I'm outside after dark playing. And, and this was a bad habit, right? Like, you don't want your kids outside after dark. There's no telling what could happen when the lights go down, right? So the way my parents explained this to me was I was outside playing. My dad opens the front door and and just starts screaming at me that something is about to get me, right? Like, hurry, hurry, get inside, get inside, it's about to get you. And I just take off running, right? I make it inside, and he slams the door, and he's breathing hard, and I'm breathing hard. He's like, oh, man, they almost got you. You got to stop going outside, man. What? Why? Why, Dad? Why do I have to stop going outside? And he literally tells me this. He says, son, if you keep going outside, the hide behinds are going to get you. And you don't want them to get you. They are these ape-like creatures that have suckers on the ends of their fingers. And inside those suckers, other guy, are claws that latch onto your back and they suck your blood through their fingertips. I'm that's, eight. That's a horrific vision. Yeah. So he's telling me this. And in my young experience, like I've been outside playing at night a lot. I have not once seen nor heard a hide behind. And I bring this point up. I'm like, Dad, Dad. What are you talking about? I've never seen a hide behind. I'm eight. I've lived. And his reply was amazing. Without skipping a beat, he says, well, that's because when you look for them, they hide behind something. And it made perfect sense in my little eight-year-old brain. Can he you imagine did. that? Uh, yeah, I can. I, my dad didn't do that. He did, He did though. Okay, so taking out the trash was one of my jobs from very early on that's because you're you're the boy you're the son right you i'm take the, son. Out the trash men take out the trash yes. women do the dishes yes I, often and that was the case in my house and we had a dishwasher and stuff but like my sister had to help we with didn't. that 
No. Nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, you did have a dishwasher. It's it's. Yeah. His name was, his <laughs> it's, name was Mom. Yeah. You had to be very polite to her. <laughs> she got broken. Yeah. Yeah. We uh yeah we did yeah we made coffee for you know our parents we did yeah we had a lot of chores going up man I think it's a good thing I think it is too and I mean like ours were and it's not like we were prisoners or anything but you say these are the things that have to happen to keep up the household. And since you live in the household, some of these are your responsibility. Like uh, we did, I did laundry as early as I, as soon as I could push the laundry basket, I started doing, mom taught me how to fold towels and get towels out of, get the clothes out of the laundry and, and get them into the house and start folding them up. Very, very young. I'm talking four or five. Anyway, dad would get me to take out the trash. I'm afraid of the dark. Really? I mean, not now, but I was then. So I, we, exactly, I was not afraid of the dark. We had opposite problems, man. Oh, I was terrified of the dark. Terrified of the dark. So, so dad, dad would say, "Okay, you go take out the trash. I'll stand at the door and wait on you." I'm like, "Okay, fair enough." So I'd get down to the trash can from the front door. You know, like you walk down the driveway, the the trash can sitting out by the road uh, at the end of the driveway. So I walk down there. I throw the stuff away. I turn to get back up the driveway to the house and as i'm like halfway up the driveway i'm at this point maybe 15 25 feet 40 at the most from the house my dad puts on this terrified and he would do this over and over and over again to me terrified look in his face his eyes would just get six feet tall ah and again like a little guttural noise and go, oh behind oh right in, ah, he's almost you know one of those mm-hmm. and i would just I mean, almost shit my pants and I run. It felt like so fast, but but the thing I could feel it on the back of my neck and it's touching and it's almost yeah. and it's got me and then it into was the, the Hydebines, man. Apparently, it was the Hydebines, the fucking Hydebines. You were a stupid child, says the eight-year-old who believed in imaginary uh, ape-like creatures that sucked blood. I was eight, man. I was eight. Yeah, we were talking about me as a child being scared by by dad in the doorway too. No, this is the reason you were stupid. Okay. Your chore was to take out the trash. Yes. You knew you were going to have to take out the trash. Yes. When you got off the bus or whatever home from school, why didn't you just drag the trash can closer to the door? Fair question. The other question would be, why didn't I take out the trash before Before it it got got dark? dark? I was lazy. I don't know if I've made that clear earlier in this podcast. Then you deserve the terror that your father... like. Father rained down on, on you. Your dad, your dad wasn't scaring you to scare you. He was trying to teach you a lesson. You just never learned it. <laughs> I think he was mostly scaring me to amuse himself. It that is- boy's going to learn one of these days. I wish I could. I wish I knew when you took out your trash so I could just jump out and scare the shit out of you. You just really want to bother me. So, I don't know how to segue this. It's odd how this came up. I, I don't want you to think that my wife and I just have odd conversations in bed. Yeah. Uh, so let me frame this up for you. Go ahead. So we're laying in bed like we do, and we're watching the Graham Norton show. Uh, it's one of the few like late night like talk guest shows that I that I watch. I enjoy it. This is on BBC. Yeah, for it's on those BBC. That, yeah, very British. Very British. And it's a and it's a panel type show, more like The View than Jay Leno, where everybody kind of talks together. Yeah, it's all all the guests are together. Yes, all the guests are together, and he's sitting there and he kind of leads the conversations as they go along. Right. Uh, it's often humorous, and I, I will watch Jay Leno. If whoever's on the show is someone I already find interesting, I'll watch the Graham Norton show and not know a single person on the panel and still enjoy it. So at the end of the show, he always does stories from the red chair where a studio audience member gets to sit in the chair, starts telling a story. He has a lever, and if the story becomes uninteresting or boring, he pulls the lever and the chair tumps backwards. We tell a great story. You get to walk out of the chair. Don't you wish that you had a big red chair in your life where you could just pull and the just lever? And just taunt people? Yes. Just like when somebody's talking and it's no longer interesting to you and you could just drop out of that I conversation. I wouldn't have any employees. <laughs> I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't have very many friends probably either. Yeah, that's a true story. <laughs> so the last story from the red chair was a lady who who was a zoologist and she recently had a job at an orangutan sanctuary. And her first day at the job, she was assigned to the uh, the toddlers 
and uh, adolescent orangutans. Like they have their own little room where they can monkey around and you know do all that stuff. Ha <laughs> ha. So her first day there, she's talking to a supervisor. Now as she's talking to her supervisor. She feels something wet slap the palm of her hand. And she looks down, and there's a little adolescent orangutan using her hand to masturbate with. Right? Just getting his little... Getting his hump on. Yeah, getting his hump on, you know, like, like monkeys do. So we're sitting there, and my wife says, hey, are, are humans and monkeys, like, are they, the only, are they the only animals that masturbate? Which is all right. That's a fair question for her. Okay, let's explore this. After she says says that, before I can say anything, because we're both kind of kind of catches me off guard that that's a topic she wants to talk about, so it catches me off guard, and she she takes a moment or two to think, and she follows it up with this, oh, I guess snakes could. <laughs> really, out of all the animals there are, the animal that you think that could masturbate besides a human or a monkey is a snake. It doesn't even have any fucking arms. It doesn't have any appendages of any kind. It's like, hey, what's the animal that is least likely to masturbate? Oh, a snake. Childish, childish me always wondered, did they have genitalia? I, I, I always thought perhaps they uh, reproduced asexually they like worms. They just cut themselves in half. I assumed, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, or, or they... Like they have both male and female parts, and they, you know, like, and that's where the myth of a hydra came from. Something, yes, yeah, exactly. Like one of them got got splintered the wrong way, and all of a sudden it had two <laughs> heads, and it hadn't quite separated yet. Yeah, you, I didn't know. I, mean, you, I don't know. Were you, I took. Were you eight and scared of the dark? Yeah, I went to a bad elementary school. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really get no learning until about eighth or ninth grade. Public school is a motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I didn't go to public school. I went to private school. Oh man, yeah. that's worse. Yeah, I know it was terrible. Uh, so yeah, so I think just about any animal with some kind of paw, fingers, I think probably masturbates. I would go out on a limb and say that any animal with externally accessible genitalia masturbates. Any animal that can touch itself or rub itself on something will and does. Uh, I don't count something like, I think when a dog's humping your leg, to me that's not masturbating. Sometimes it is because sometimes they come. Right, but he's using me to get off. To, I think masturbating is a very self you like masturbating is a you thing. Okay, what about if a dog humps a toy? Until no, it doesn't it count. That's, a, that's the toy. It's the toy's getting it off. If you're humping, if you hump a toy, does it? Is that not no, masturbation? I'm not, no, I'm not masturbating. I'm, I'm, I've got a weird fetish, but I'm not masturbating. So, so a man that uses like a masturbation sleeve or something like that—that's not masturbation. Like that's what they're called. What's a master? I don't even know what a masturbate. What well, is like a, a ma- flashlight is a masturbation sleeve. That's what it is. It is a thing that you put your penis in and then jerk it back and forth. Right, but you're having to do the motion with your hand. Like you're not just right. Well, yeah, okay. Hold it still and then hump it. Ah, that's not masturbating. That's humping. You just said it. You just humped it. You didn't masturbate it. Okay, that's a weird definition, and I don't think most people would hold to it. Other guy. You just said exactly what you're doing. You weren't masturbating. You were humping it. To me, masturbation is any time that you pleasure yourself sexually without someone else in the room. Whether you use a prop, if you hump the mattress, that's not masturbation? What if, like, a kid and you and your girlfriend are, like, dry humping? You would consider that masturbating? Mutual masturbation in that case, because you're rubbing her and she's rubbing you, but it's not sex. I don't think that's master. That's dry humping, man. Which is a form of masturbation, I would say. No, I'm gonna. If she gives I, you a, if she gives you a hand job, that's masturbation, right? No, this may or may not. That's be a hand that. job. She's masturbating you. No, she's not. She's she's jerking me off. That's a hand job. That is not masturbation. I guarantee you, what will be in next week's podcast, the definition of masturbation. From the dictionary, yeah. I'm going to say, Masturbating though, is the only thing that you can, like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm masturbating. If if you have another thing you can call it, I don't think it's masturbating. What are you okay, doing? Oh, so, I'm, I'm humping this pillow. So when a woman uses a vibrator, that's not masturbation? It depends on how the act is is done. If she uses a pistoning, auto-inserting rod, that's not masturbation because she's getting fucked by the machine? Exactly. If she uses a rabbit and she has to thrust it in and out of herself, she's masturbating. that's masturbation? 
It's a very fine line, my friend. That's fucked up and wrong, I think. I cannot wait. If you're right, like if masturbation is so fine, finitely, f- f- so definitely defined, no. That's a horrible use of the word definitely. It's, yeah, it's, it's definitely really defined. If, 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 it's so, <laughs> if it's so narrowly defined, there we okay. go. If the word masturbation is Acutely so narrowly defined. defined. Like what? Acutely defined. Oh, look at you being the, the fancy one. Now I like it. Yes, if it's so acutely defined, I call foul. That's nonsense. That's too fine a definition to put on it. You just said two other things that you consider masturbation, and you literally defined it as two different things when you were talking about it, man. You said, hey, you're humping the mattress. You're right. That's exact. I am humping the mattress. I call that masturbation. Mm. That's a different way to masturbate. There are many, 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 many ways to masturbate. I'm sure there are many that I don't know about, and I know lots. So in the movie American Pie, the dude's <laughs> masturbating the American Pie? He's not masturbating the pie. He is masturbating with the pie, I would say. And He's that. jerking it and the pie's jerking it? No. <laughs> he is masturbating with himself pie. using a pie. Okay, it's better. Then you might say, how is he going about that? And I would say, well, you see, he put his penis into the pie, and he is thrusting back and forth into it, as if it were a vagina. Right, but you didn't say he was humping the pie. That would be the short way to it. You had said that if I say humping, that it's not means th- it right. can't be masturbation. Right. To me, you defined him humping the pie. You did not define for me him masturbating with the pie. All right. Well, perhaps not. And if it is, I don't want to masturbate anymore. I don't want to share that joy with a pie. You nobody said you had to use the pie. No, I don't want to share that joy. That could be like, that's a that's a me thing. That's a personal thing with me, man. So you're gonna give up masturbation if it turns out that you can do it with things. Yeah. <laughs> then it's it's lost all joy. <laughs> I don't, I, I, I don't want to say. I don't know. It's got a lot of joy. <laughs> I don't want to share this thing that I've grown up with with sickos out there humping pies, man. <laughs> I don't want that blemish. All right. Fair enough. So I say that everything that has external genitalia masturbates. You say everything that's got everything that can get its limbs down there. Yeah. Anything that's got like, like I think a squirrel like masturbates. Flippers. Dolphin? Does a dolphin masturbate? Uh, I don't think a dolphin can masturbate. I think a dolphin humps things. Yeah, I think a dolphin, I guess, would have to hump things. I don't think a dolphin can get its flippers anywhere around there to Yeah, but I think like a squirrel would masturbate. A kangaroo would masturbate. A bear, maybe? (laughs) I don't... Oh, there's a prickly pear. (laughs) When you pick a pear, I'll (laughs) pick a ball pear. (laughs) Anything that can touch itself masturbates. Maybe you and I should write... One of those fake children's books, like the everything's everything poops, <laughs> everything jacks. <laughs> it would sell millions. <laughs> so where did Mrs. Other Guy decided though? Wait a minute. Okay, okay. So we know where you and I stand, and we're gonna look this up, and we'll find the definitive answers for next week. What masturbates in in the animal kingdom? She thinks a snake. She, she thinks. <laughs> She That's her apes and humans and snakes. and snakes. Ah, so she was saying, okay, but how does she also define masturbation like you do? In which case, apparently not. I was gonna say like sliding along on the ground, yeah. rubbing its like that was. Is that what she was thinking? Like, oh well, the snake's like just constantly jacking off. <laughs> that's it's all like, it does. Oh god! That's, oh, it feels so good over here. <laughs> that's why snakes are always pissed off when you see them because you interrupted. Yes, yeah, so they're, they're, like, like, they're, they're gonna like, bite you. That's how. Yeah, that's how mad they are. I'm trying to finish over here. Yeah, this room is in use. <laughs> <laughs> they're just pissed off. Like every time you step over, they just bite you. You'd probably react the same way. Like if you, like if every time you. Try to masturbate. Somebody walked in on you. Every time I saw something, <laughs> yeah. I was in the middle of masturbation. Snakes are just always pissed. I, I would, I when wouldn't be mad. I, well, I would say this: if I'm in the middle of masturbating and somebody opens the door, anger is not my first thought. <laughs> shock, <laughs> shock, and a little bit of shame are my first two thoughts. If, probably, if anger was though, you like people would try to avoid you. <laughs> yeah. What are you and gonna you could, like throw a master- handful at him? And, and you can <laughs> masturbate a lot more, like this, like the snake. Ah! Like, <laughs> <laughs> they open the door, you just growl at him. Ah! <laughs> what would you do? What would you do? <laughs> what would 
you do me? What? Like, can you imagine walking into like, a, like your granddad masturbating? And, he, and his response, his response is to look at you and growl, to, to look at you angrily, like, like I have few things that make me happy in this world at age ninety eight, and this is one of them. And you come in here and you fuck it up. My buddies didn't die face down yeah. in the beach so on I Normandy. Masturbate. So you could interrupt me while I'm trying to bust a nut. You know how hard it was for me to manage this erection. <laughs> Bagger's not cheap. It's been six months since I've come. <laughs> My eyeballs are floating. I'm so backed up. Oh, man. I wish, uh. I, wish I had the snake mentality. I wish I did. Because everybody gets walked in on sooner or later. Oh God! Oh, you know, I <laughs> did your mother ever? Did you? Did your mother ever catch you? I'm sure. I don't remember my mom ever catching me. I am. She did knock on my door a couple of times when I had the door closed and a girl was with me. That's not masturbating. No, I'm. We're, no, I'm. We're on the same page there. If the girl is there, that's not masturbation. Mom. I don't know if she was cooler than I wanted to give her credit for, and I've never had the guts like recently to ask her about it. I don't know if she knew what was going on precisely, and she was just reminding me to cut it out so that it didn't get too far, or or if she was worried about walking in on me herself or whatever. But like, yeah, she never caught me. It was always like she'd knock on the door and be like, "Hey," and I'd be like, "What, mom?" As we quickly put clothes back on and. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure. I would have, I would guess that I've been walked in on, or I, I would guess I've been caught masturbating. And just haven't remembered it. I know I've been walked in on having sex by that girlfriend's mother. Oh wow! That's what happens when you have sex in the kitchen. <laughs> How dumb were we? You had sex in the kitchen at her parents' house. Yeah, during uh, the day. Her teenager. moms are a motherfucker, man. They make you do stupid stuff. That's true, man. That's I have every I feel for teenagers because it is literally it, it is it's an emotional nuclear bomb dropped on their world, man. Like and and it goes off. They live with the fallout for a decade, really, while your body settles into it. That's fucked up, man. Yeah. Oh god, I'm going to have two of them, man. What are you talking two little about? hormone bombs and like in like what do I got? I got I got a four year old and a three year old now, so I got like ten years before it Seven gets bad. Tops. Jesus, man! Yeah, they eat too much processed food. Like it'll be, like they'll both be bursting at eleven, <laughs> like have chin hair and and you know like biceps. Hi, Dad. How's it going? Yeah, I don't. I mean, because I don't have kids. Which, by the way, I was terrified. When my ex-wife was pregnant with the first one, until we found out that it was a boy, I was t- one of the many things I was terrified about. I, I worried about having to clean a vagina. <laughs> like, really? Oh, I was terrified of it. I, I always felt like there would be the assumption any time you had to do it in a public setting, like any time you had to take the little girl to change her diaper, someone would go, mm, you know he's thinking something about that. I, I just, I like the perception that it was twisted in some way. Or like... All of a sudden, it's weird, and you can't wrestle with her anymore when she's, like, six, you know? I, uh, forever, I've always just wanted a boy. I think most men do. Like, ah, oh, I gotta have a boy, gotta have a boy. I've warmed up to the idea of, I want a daughter. Like, I want my first kid to be a daughter. I want a little girl, man. I, I think, like, to take a little baby girl and to parent her and watch her grow up and just and just watch her bloom into a, a beautiful, intelligent independent woman is much more spectacular than raising a son i do think it's harder it's got to be harder yeah oh i i passed on my legacy through my son i raised some horn dog goon that's eventually gonna go bald and raise another goon like i like the fact that i've only got to worry about two penises instead of all of the penises in the world on the flip side all of our friends have boys. Somebody's got to start having some girls, or like, are the next generation's going to die out? I want, a, I want a little girl. You need like a whole softball team. Full. No. no, no. You don't want like a like a mini wagon full. Like I want to have two kids. I just don't think I have the patience for more than that. It's and, a lot. And either I want two girls, or a boy and a girl. Two boys would. 
I, I couldn't do it. It's a lot of energy, man. The, the cool thing is, like, even at three... Uh, like, sometimes I want to sit around and have a tea party, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't always... I don't always want to race cars and, and shoot guns. Deuce did tell me today that he was the princess, so... <laughs> There is that. <laughs> Did he? He's he's young. So does he? Does he understand the concept between prince and princess, or does he literally know there's a prince and a princess? And dad, I want to be the princess. I think he just knows that it's two different job titles. Right. I don't like, think he, he understands get that it's gender related. If we were playing restaurant and son number one had been waiter, he probably would have said, well, I'll be the waitress, and not known that that's Right, he just the thinks they're two different do. jobs. It's like, you and I have talked about how like they don't seem, they don't seem to see race. Uh, they do see color, but they think it's awesome and fun. They don't think about those two people being from a different place, or they just have no concept of ethnicity or race or, or divisions of people or whatever. I think at times they almost don't really see gender either. They do know that there are yeah, boys and they, girls. Yeah, I don't think that they would see. I mean, uh, like, re- they both know that boys have penises and girls don't. They get that because they have to go to the cop, bathroom. Huh? Well, not kindergarten cop, but first off, they've been in the bathroom with their mother, and so they've seen that she's not built like – and they've been in the bathroom with me. They know what I look like, and they, and they know that I look like them. They know that she doesn't look like them. Mama's a girl, daddy's a boy. Okay, they get that. And they see their friends at school and that they dress differently. All women are moms to them, really. Uh, But more than that, mom to them or girl doesn't mean what it means to us. You and I think, well, girls do these sorts of things and guys do these sorts of things. For instance, guys are waiters, girls are waitresses, guys are president, girls are housewives. Not just that, but... Son number one and Deuce, to them, the girl in their class could be a professional baseball player just like they could be. And meanwhile, Deuce could be a princess just like the girl in his class could be. Maybe he'd make an excellent princess. (laughs) (laughs) We can only hope. I hope he's a Khaleesi. If he wants to be, that's what I should tell him. I was like, you can't be a princess. You can be a Khaleesi. (laughs) On that note. We're closing this motherfucker out. That's all I got. I'm spent. I'm one guy. And I'm the other. And this has been the podcast. Parade around the better half of me. Never really fell apart. Never had a broken heart. Now that you could see because of you. Spin.